caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy Going through the motions, I'm sorry. But I just sing another song. Take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. Only you. Oh, I'm sorry. When I'm coming. God, that you're enough. Take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to see.
just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Your presence is holy Your presence is holy Your presence is holy Presence is holy. Your presence is holy. is holy declare it declare it declare it now your presence is holy holy one holy one holy one holy one your presence is holy is holy we set our minds we set our hearts to seek the face of the almighty your presence is holy we set our hearts we set our gaze upon the holy one the holy one your presence is holy we set our gaze fix our gaze, we set our eyes like flint, oh, your presence is holy, we set our eyes, we fix our eyes, we set our 
foreheads like flint Your presence is holy
Spirit. He may come in glory. Jesus finds his pleasure and delight in the fear of the Lord. All his pleasure and joy is wrapped up in that one spirit. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come on, Andy. 
Have your way, have your way, Lord, have your way. Do what you want. Jesus, all glorious, create in us a
focus on the Lord, I just want to invite anybody um, here or online that you may say, you know what, I don't know that I can sing that. Once I was lost, now I'm found. I don't know that I've been found. You know, I was, I was reminded, it would have been this month, some 20-something years ago, and uh, Jesus came into my life. I was really out there, illegal drugs legal drugs, felonies, all this nonsense. Whatever your story is, I can assure you, if it's not fully given over to him, you'll never find what you were born for. It's impossible. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Just like you get wages, you get paid bi-weekly, whatever your job pays you. If you're living a life in sin, your paycheck, you can take it to the bank no pun intended, will be death. You've got to give your life fully over to Jesus Christ. This is the hour. The Bible says, no man's been promised tomorrow. Choose this day who you will serve. 
and we're all family here. So I want to invite you if you say, you know what, that's me this morning. Could be a, a different state season after season. You know, I used to live for the Lord. I don't fully now or you never have. I want to invite you to come now just come down to the front. There's something about making a public decision, proclamation, declaration about giving your life to Jesus. Awesome. Welcome this man here. Give me a hug. How are you, sir? God bless you. Welcome, welcome. Love the hair, man. How are you? God bless you. God bless you. Awesome. And uh, maybe William and Jason, if you could come help me pray. Anybody else? You can tell we're just family here, all trying to surrender fully to Jesus. Welcome. Awesome. So, so beautiful. So let's pray. I love that, man. Do you like dip that in, in bleach? That's, that's incredible, man. I wish I had longer hair to, to pull that off. So let's focus on the Lord. The Bible says it's super important that we decree out loud, you know, that Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. Now, I don't want to run anymore. I want to give you my life fully, and everything will change. But outside of him, no life can come. So God, I thank you for these precious men and this this precious woman. So let's just focus on Jesus because you're coming to him. He died and rose again some 2,000 years ago. And let's say this out loud, everybody together, as we look to the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, this morning, I give you my life. I turn from my decisions of sin and I surrender all of who I am to you. I believe you came into the earth born of a virgin You lived a flawless life. You died and rose again on the third day. And this morning, I surrender my life fully to you. Change me, Jesus. Fill me, Holy Spirit. I want to surrender everything to you. I want to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. I just want to pray, God, I bless you in Jesus' name with the Spirit of God. Complete liberation, sealing by the Spirit. Mighty man of valor, we bless you in Jesus' name. Right now, filled with the Spirit, sealed for His purposes in Jesus' name. I bless you. I bless you. Filled by the Spirit, sealed for His purposes in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. You can go back to your seats, but I want to encourage you get plugged in here or somewhere. There's Bible believing. Lock arms with people that love Jesus. It's going to be a, a new day in a new way. Awesome. Look to your neighbor. Say, You look a lot like Jesus. I sense the glory of God upon you. Thank you, Lord. All right, all right. What an incredible. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Let me leave this with with Jason. Do you mind? Uh, Thank you. Look, we're like up in Alaska or something, man. The Aurora uh, glory. Somehow, uh, Tracy matched the, the thing. Spirit led Zoe's like, I don't know how Tracy does it. Somehow she matches it like every week. So good. But um, excited to be with you guys again in the presence of the Lord. How many of you love the presence and word of God? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Excited to share something that's kind of been brewing in my heart this morning. A couple of quick announcements. Um. But one thing, I, I meant to mention it last week, it's just ironic is all. I don't know. It may not be spiritual at all. But uh, some students brought it to me, and the uh, first one did, and then another one. I was like, man, I, I didn't know about this. But if you all remember, recently we were in a, a kind of a series, not planned, but it just happened that way, on like driving away the vultures. You know, the new covenants, like the renewal of the mind and, and all this. Well, it just so happened Apparently, like right near here, there's an animal sanctuary right in the middle of our series 
like seven, they, they have all kind of animals, tons of birds and all kind like an animal zoo, I guess. All the vultures, like 700 of them just died out of nowhere. <laughs> I know, you got to watch, and then I'll teach them the power of the tongue. So next time I got to make sure and like, hey, keep it figurative, keep it prophetic. I know, if I'm honest, I'm not losing sleep over it, but I mean, <laughs> I just think that's kind of crazy. Like no other birds, nothing, just all of a sudden 700 of them just wham. Right, the closest to this area, you just got to watch some of that. So I don't know, may not be connected at all. It's just crazy. So anyway, but I like it spiritually speaking for us, you know, I pray that we're, we're getting better at driving away the vultures and, and um, it'll be good. So take up a quick um, tithe and offer and give you a chance to give into the things of God and a couple of announcements. It's going to be good. Um, however you feel led, we're so grateful again, of course, practically all of you and, and online that continue to sow into what God's doing. And then practically too, in your life, you know, I love to implement this as much as we can, just as a culture, you want to live a generous life. It, it just unlocks something. It's just Jesus. It's the Lord. It's good. And um, to update you, we're really gaining ground in the event center. Um, I wonder if one morning our cameras can reach over there. I don't wonder if they would lose signal. Jackson, do you think they would lose signal over there? You want to try it? Let's try that. Possible failure. <laughs> so we'll look at the comfort monitor, but uh, the kids may still be in playtime, but you'll see if you could um, let Jackson know to at least pan the stage, we're, we're starting to um, gain some serious ground over there. It may lose signal, but if not, you can get a visual. Um, with building that out to enable um, growth, you know, which we're... Um, Anybody that knows me or us for any length of time, the Lord knows I don't really care about numbers so much, if I'm honest. I just want quality. And if quality, oh, there it is. Whoa, check this out. So cool. In the balcony, you can see it. So see, this would be, is going to be the stage. If, if you're in person, it's much larger. And then pan the, the whole space, Jackson, if you can. If they can uh, tell him. Look, connect four game over to the right. Oh, bouncy houses for the glory. Um, okay, we lost signal. So now you got to go to imagination. So anyway, it keeps going. It's a big open space. And, um, but anyway, if quality, sorry, if quant, uh, quality, yeah, goes quantity, praise God too, I'm open to whatever the Lord wants to do. Um, and it just happens to be going that way, which we're so grateful for. We got an email, I think from last week, that people were pulling in and couldn't find parking spots. And and, and frustrated, which we completely understand. Please forgive us, be gracious with us. But the next big field, Jackson, can you try the field? Sorry to overwork you. Let's try the field. <laughs> Let's just be fun. We're testing our camera limits. Uh, it, you know, maybe pan the parking lot first, but then the big field where we do the s'mores. This will be fun. Mike should have tried this beforehand, you think? So you'll see where our parking lot will be. anticipation <laughs> maybe maybe it didn't work um, so anyway again in your imagination there's a big field next to the parking lot and uh, so we got an email last week that the um, people yeah couldn't find parking spots things like this and as you can tell we're getting snug in here and we're very grateful for people that are hungry and as you've noticed, I've kind of, kind of been saying it from the initial weeks, like we're not preaching anything mamby-pamby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're not like handing out cotton candy afterwards. So I'm really, I'm encouraged. Like, wow, there's a people that you're just hungry for the Lord, his word, the good, the, the tougher messages, whatever it may be. And um, so that the parking will increase shortly. And all that being said to that, that um, cost greatly. So would the Lord put it on your heart? We'd be so grateful. And again, you can never go wrong with sowing into the kingdom. So um, you should have envelopes to give. You can give online as well. And we'll pray. In a second, I'll invite you up. I always have to remember newer. How many of you are new here this morning? First time ever. Welcome. Yes, my man here in the back. Okay, welcome. In the balcony, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So good to see you guys. Ah, don't be sure to just raid the bookstore when you leave. Anything you want is free shirts, coffee mugs, if we still have any books, um, that'll be good. But in a minute, we'll make room to get out in the aisles should you want to give in person with the offering envelope and the baskets. 
and then you can give online to checks made payable to us in church. Jesus, thank you so much for your presence, your word, that we get to gather together in you. I pray you be glorified this morning. Let your word go forth like fresh manna. Let us hear the knock um, of the Revelation 320 door. Just open it because we hear your voice. Come in and dine with us, I pray. Make us one with you. Transform us. Let us be pleasing to you, Jesus. You're everything. We love you. Amen. Awesome. You can come give. And we'll play, oh, play the Academy video. Should be good. Thank you, Jesus. So, so good. What, uh, what's your name right here? The new Joe. Wow, so nice to meet you. Are you from the area or? Come on, Decatur, so good. So I'm from Louisiana, you know, Baton Rouge, a little further south. And we've been here about three years, but we love it. It was an upgrade for us. <laughs> Better weather, it can snow maybe. Louisiana, it's not happening. You gotta get the little like snow stickers during winter, put them on your window and pretend. But love, love, uh, love it here. I saw you pick that God of Wonders. Good choice, man. That book. Sorry if it freaks you out. I don't. I think you're. I think you're <laughs> from the same cloth. It'll be good for you. So, so good. But look, man. Um, I was reminded from. So we, we started school. We're only a weekend. Really excited. And uh, yeah, thank you, Lord. And uh, I'd love for you to join us if you feel that. But look at this, man. I don't know. Again, kind of like the vultures. I don't know. It's interesting. But Wednesday, so Monday, this past Monday, dear friend David Popovici. Was that just this Monday? Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, we get together every Wednesday to minister to the Lord. It's incredible. We get up in here some nights. It's my kids, my Shireen, whatever. We're all over the place. Um, Porter, Missy, a lot of different students. Uh, you know, we go for it for two hours. And um, I'm so grateful. Um, Kristen emailed in because this again. I don't know. I asked our sound um, guy, and I know uh, Dante and and um, Reuben were trying to run our sound, trying to figure it out, but just you don't know. I just love that could be the Lord and just what he's after. So this past Wednesday, it's almost like if it was, I think it very well could be. It's like he was just waiting, like he can't wait. So our Wednesdays, nobody's teaching or preaching anything. We're just ministering to him. Two straight hours, he's just spread out. And we come in here, Zoe went the first hour, Judah the second um, hour. Glorious, and so... When they shifted, I guess Zoe passed the baton more or less, right in there. It, it, was, it was a sweet pocket and all, and it was ebbs and flows typically anyway. But right in the initial start of, of Judah, I'm down here. We're all spread out as students, and I hear a female singing alongside Judah. Y'all you heard it too. Yeah, so much so. I'm not kidding you. I'm down here so much so. I go, Zoe stayed up there? Because she never does that. I was like, Zoe, wow, she's like, that's beautiful. She's harmonizing with you. I, I literally thought she stayed up here, but I knew. I was like, she doesn't do that. So I looked, and she was nowhere up here. And we know that we've been in here enough. We know the sound of the students together. We always worship collectively out here. It was through the house. It was like some extra. So I was like, I had to ask. I'm so glad you emailed in because when y'all heard it too, I was thinking, I didn't know. 
beautiful, like, I don't know, just angelic, whatever. And uh, I asked uh, Ruben, I think him and Dante were going back and forth. I, I thought, you know, maybe he put some sweet reverb on it or something that I don't know how he, you can make that happen. He's like, no, I can't do that. And uh, I don't know anything about, about sound and all that really. So, um, but anyway, I love that, man. It's almost like heaven couldn't wait day one to come back and minister him and angels and like, we just want him, you know. Um, I don't know if you, I've shared this, I believe with our students, but if you guys have ever heard that, that song many years ago, by Jason Upton called Fly. I'd encourage if you've not heard of it, go back on YouTube. It's got sauce on it, heavenly. And, and just kind of rule of thumb when I'm seeking the Lord, I try and find those pockets where I know something got crossed with heaven. There's talent and then there's glory. If you got both, praise God, but you always want glory. And so I try to find those, those junctures where heaven meets the earth and then I'll just break them. The repeat button, just break them. Just over, I mean, just play them over and over. See God in, in them and all this. Well, it just so happened I was at that live recording that Jason Upton, the fly one. So if you ever hear it, I was in the building. It was in Louisiana. A mutual friend, it, it was the connection, all this stuff. So we're in there, and uh, it was great at first, singing worship. There's actually kids in the front kind of distracted, talking, younger uh, gentlemen, like probably youth group-ish. But all of a sudden, heaven met. Whole room shifted. Fly, fly. He's just going off spontaneous. I think his name was Michael on the flute or whatever it is. And those same kids that were distracted minutes ago were on their face yelling out, Abba, Daddy, crying out to God. It was bananas. The, the whole room just shifted on the dime. Later we find out that the sound guy was back there running the sound and an extra track got picked up that what, nothing was hooked up to it, but you could see it. And it was, they caught angels singing in harmony with the meeting. And that's why heaven had met, the, the meeting got, did that, you know, and, um, and it was precious, but I'm just believing for more and more. Oh, and that was, that was what too, when, when it was happening, when the Wednesday shifted and then it shifted into the second part, I was seeing lights and I kept thinking, oh, it must be our LED wall. And, so much so that I check the time because, you know, you start to see angelic involvement and all this. But I just love heaven. I know that's strange for some, but man, just read the book for a little bit. Like go back to Revelation if that start, starts getting interesting to you. Um, Jesus' face lit up like a light bulb, way brighter than that. But anyway, I just like that type of stuff. So more Lord, we say welcome it. And at the school too, we were announcing it and that's good. So, all right, let's jump in. I want to talk to you this morning We'll see where it will go um, uh, on the Prince of Peace. My sweet Jesus. One of his titles, the Prince of Peace. Super important. Really anything Jesus is important. And uh, I, w I want it. I want more of him. I want to embody it and, and it be good. So um, I want to start it off with what I believe and in a, in a minute, hopefully I'll set kind of a context for it. But I believe that uh, peace will be one of the greatest commodities in the last hour. And some of these things that we flippantly read by in the word and kind of get overlooked often, I think are going to start to come to the top. And those that, I mean, I mean the real Prince of Peace, the, the word I'm talking about, not some superficial. I mean, at biblical level peace, those that obtain it, sustain it, walk in it, are going to be set apart in the last hour. They're going to stick out like a sore thumb in a good way. I believe peace and that which Jesus says, I leave with you and I give to you, is going to be one of the greatest commodities in the last hour. And there's some biblical parameters, parameters, sorry, kind of a formula really, a recipe that are super clear on how we, we yield our life fully into it because it doesn't just sovereignly come on you and stay. I wish it did, but that's not biblical. And, um, and I just want to, I love what the word and how, how it's, it's over and over again in it, and the Lord um, highlights it. Kind of will come to the floor. Is that cool? If I need a coffee break, I'll come back up. Um, but I have a lot of notes, and we're going to camp out on a couple of uh, main passages. But I have peace as one of the most vital God-given assets that we will be in dire need of on a continual basis as the last few chapters of this temporal world come to a close. I feel like the Lord's highlighting it. Why it's one of his main titles given, the Prince of Peace. 
man, I was in his presence yesterday. He just, he just does it. I don't know how he does it. You come out and you're just <laughs> still waters. You start brushing up against the Prince of Peace, changes everything. All hell can be breaking loose and you're just like, just coasting through life. And I pray he hits this morning that for all of us, there's a new tangible way to grab a hold of that Prince of Peace. It becomes more common ground for us. And as the shaking increases, which it's going to, that we're just, they're just like, what, how do you, who are you? I don't know, I just know this man goes by the name Prince of Peace. He owns it. He is it. And I just don't do all that in, undisturbed. I don't do all that. Um, I have here uh, Jesus knowing this right before his departing in, in John 14, not to die, rise again, all this. That was the main kind of exit door. He said, look, my peace. He actually said, peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you, meaning it can be permanent. And that's what I love. You can see it in the word that, um, that it's, it can really be permanent like always. Like if it wasn't in there, I wouldn't preach it. But the Bible's very clear. We never have to come outside of it ever. The Bible even says be anxious for nothing. There, no thing uh, be anxious for, meaning there's never a reason good enough to be anxious. Biblically, I was speaking. But I love that like you'll never find the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit outside of peace. They never, they never move outside of it. They will not get outside of the parameters of peace. That's where mistakes happen, missing the will of God. His voice gets cloudy. The disturbed waters of the soul are out there. And Jesus doesn't live in that, in that field. Um, so some practicals that are fun is the word um, peace is written in the word of God some upwards of 420 plus times, depending on what version, it's just over and over and over again. Um, I was looking it up because, again, I think we read through it quickly. But is it, is it Bella? How are you doing? Beautiful. Good to see you again. Uh, the Tomei family. But if you read, it's like all, it's like Paul, Peter, all of them, they, they won't come off of it in the epistles. Uh, I was just for like statistics st sake, I looked and out of 21 epistles, post gospels in the book of Acts, starting right out of the gate in Romans, 21 epistles, all, all of them start with peace be with you. It's, and it's always either grace is in there too or love, but peace is in all of them. Very vital. Paul's like, listen, he starts them, it's like his, the two bookends often, often he lands it with it too. Of course, he's writing into a persecuted church, which we're heading. How many of you know we're heading that way? And so if we don't get these things now, it's better to learn before. And, um, but out of 21 epistles, only four, it's not in there. And two of them are John, of course, first and third John. John's just another bird. He didn't even give you introductions. You don't know who's writing his books. He's like, in the beginning, he just comes out about the Lord. So he means it. It's in Second John. But Paul, Peter, all of them. Um, I think Hebrews, because we don't even know, they debate. I think Paul wrote it, but they debate on who kind of authored it. James and like Second John, only four of them. So anyway, all the epistles, they start off like, peace be with you. The God of peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace. And, um, and it's super important. Isaiah 9, that's where the Prince of Peace is given to the Lord. Galatians 5, I'm just kind of building some emphasis on how important it is. Um, Galatians 5. Oh, yeah, totally forgot. So sorry. We're going to El Salvador tomorrow. <laughs> That's kind of, that was kind of a pretty important one. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. But um, should you feel led to pray for us, myself and a lot of our students are going to El Salvador. Really excited. We'll hit the ground running. I'll be back for next Sunday. Going to pass the baton and let our team, actually, I think the biggest church service, well, our team will be taking it and I know they're going to rock it. It's going to be good. But we'll be all over prison. I think we're even meeting with the president, but then a television, the police force, like all throughout society, but preaching and strengthening churches every night, winning the loss, like every facet we can get into with the gospel. Um, we're going full force. Hopefully ra ra wrecking havocs are on the kingdom of darkness, casting devils out and all this. So anyway, yeah, come on, Lord. So be praying for us if you... Uh, Feel led, that'll be good. Galatians 5, 
Uh, you don't need to turn there. I'm going quick, but uh, we will turn together here in a second. Galatians 5 uh, emphasizes, puts emphasis on the, one of the main fruits of the Spirit is peace. Like I'm telling you, the God of peace, Prince of peace, fruit of the Spirit, peace. They just don't get outside of it. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I think one of the main like joys of heaven is going to be that substance that's really who he is, peace. You ever been in somebody's home and it's like fingernails down a chalkboard? or just around them, their world, their, their, everything's disturbed. We don't do that. We don't do that, we do peace. heaven's peace and they know no other substance. Many other things too, love, joy, but peace will be the aroma of heaven. You'll go in and everything's just still. When we look at the word in a second, it's quiet, undisturbed. We don't move, we're not shaken. Jesus is never shaken. Burning at times with zeal for the church, flipping tables, oh yeah, but his soul still waters always. Weeping sometimes. He was, a, he was a real man, 100% man, 100% God, but um, still. So I think it's going to be massive and is now. Listen to the word um, broke down in Greek. It means uh, in Greek peace. Because sometimes, like, yeah, peace, you know, or like it, it has these superficial meanings, but the deep biblical meaning of it is uh, one. I love to think of it as being one with God. One, complete. Quietness. Actually, you'll see in a second when Jesus rebuked the storm, remember he said, peace, be still. The word, the original Greek word he actually used was silence. When he said peace, silence. There's something to do with that, that the peace of God that keeps you just silent still. Peace of mind. Um, when all essential parts are joined together, wholeness to make you complete, God's gift of wholeness. This one I love, because it's just simple to the point. Undisturbed. You ever, those things just come at you throughout life and they just disturb you. That's when peace starts to leave. And there's a place in God we can access and fully walk in where we're just never disturbed. Will we make mistakes? Oh yeah, all the time. But I think the more we lean into the Prince of Peace and walk with him, we can take this place deeper. Um, of walking in it. One of the telltale signs I have here that you're in the presence of God is peace. Have you ever done that? Something's really getting at you and you go to seek God and all of a sudden he just stills the waters of your soul. Peace comes because he is the Prince of Peace. That's one of the dead giveaway to me when you're in the presence of God. One of the best ways to hear God and know, know you're hearing clearly is following peace. I want to encourage you guys, you know, the Bible says, and we're not even going to this verse, but that peace that passes all of your understanding, will guard your mind and, and heart. Well, often, even in decision making, I would encourage you. We know God speaks in so many ways, but often it's that inner witness that, uh, and that's where peace is. Some of you heard this story. One time I was um, leaving my driveway, my, kid, my children were with me. I was going to fish in the back of the neighborhood. wasn't going far at all. Just going to fish. And um, I go to get my truck. I always, to the lake, that, when we were in Baton Rouge, the back of our neighborhood, I would always go this way. Have my fish, fishing pole. Kids were coming. Zoe was probably going to say hey to the geese. And, and it was awesome. So I, I get in the truck right away. I heard the spirit say, go that way. There's a different way I could have gone to the lake. And it was a random. It came like a thought, like an inner, very random but I leaned on my understanding and peace will always come with his voice, but it's usually not alongside your understanding. It's the peace that passes your understanding. So I shone the peace and that clarity and, and went with my understanding driving in my neighborhood. Didn't even go half a block. And I turn, pull up behind this older lady and her friend. And, um, they just stopped randomly in this street in our neighborhood, trying to get to the lake in the back and um, she just stops. So I stop, I'm waiting on her. All of a sudden she puts it in reverse and punches it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Wham, hits my truck. Uh, glass flies up on the hood. And I was like, man, Holy Spirit tried to save me on this one. I was in sin though. I didn't go rob a bank or anything, but I disobeyed him. I missed his voice and, and it cost me. So kids were like, what is going on? So it's funny, sweet lady, made sure she was okay. She was sweet till the cops got there. Look, man. 
<laughs> so so seemed everything seemed innocent. And then a cop gets there. He's like, what happened? And all of a sudden, like this convenient amnesia hit her. She just didn't know. I just, I, it was, I just, I don't know. We, I'm like, you don't know. You punched it in reverse <laughs> and smashed me. And, uh, but sure enough, thank goodness the cop was no rook, rookie. He goes, ma'am, the gla- your glass on your rear thing just flew on the backside of his. You clearly, the force shows you hit him. He was smart. He had seen enough wrecks. Meaning at our, I hit her, the glass would have imploded into her car. So thank goodness the proof, you know, did what it did. And, and uh, we went on. But I, I overrode that peace. And so often, even in walking with God, it's like just stopping, getting still. Lord, what, what is your way? And peace will come. It's often the, the best go-to on even hearing God accurately. Can you always go with that? He speaks in many different means, but that's a big one as well. And, and being in his presence. Watch this. As soon as we get outside of peace, we get outside of where God dwells. He's not there. And it begins to get more and more difficult to hear him, to know him and follow him. So as soon as you start, and I think we don't know it often. I pray this morning we it would be like, ah, renew our mind and we get better at it. But we don't realize we, how often we get outside of it and try and function in that arena. And we'll see clearly in a second the God of peace can easily not be with you. We go, but no, he never leaves me nor forsakes me. Contractually, yeah, but relationally, he can be nowhere where you are. That's Bible. And you can be off on your own, out on some rough waters of your soul, making horrible decisions, Ishmael's, this, that, and the other. When you get outside of peace, you begin to start making mistakes. So um, I, I want to point this out, and then we'll hop into the word together. Um, I believe we are heading into days of increased storms and shaking like we have not yet been accustomed to. And if we do not learn how to intimately walk step by step with the Prince of Peace, it will cost us more than we are willing and were certainly even expecting to pay. Not doom and gloom, but I really, you can sense it. The word is pretty obvious, but we're going to be heading into days of it. What's up, young man? You want to come in? You need a seat? You can sit right up here, man. VIP again. Love the hoodie. Yeah, you can take my seat right here unless you got another one. But what's your name? Caleb, nice to meet you, man. Love the hair. How are you? Welcome. You can sit right here. It's my daughter, Zoe. Nice to meet you. Um, But, you know, it'll cost us more than we're willing to pay. And I believe shaking's coming, which by default, it's very easy. The human nature can incline and lean to it, and it disturbs. We lose peace. The God of peace starts to um, leave. Those that know how to obtain sustain and continually abide in the Prince of Peace will be some of the greatest overcomers in this finalizing hour. Look, the gifted ones, all the status, the whatever. If you, can, if you don't know how to run inside the Prince of Peace with where the days are heading, it'll expose you fast. These are the things that really matter um, right now. Um, you don't need to turn there, but Matthew 5 says, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. Basically, and you can't make peace unless you walk in it and know it and wear the thing. You can't create and make something you don't know yourself. So meaning if you're not a peacemaker, you're really not even called a children of God. It, it should be like the aroma, the cologne or perfume that we wear. People get around us like, man, why are these people never disturbed? Like nothing bothers them. I hear of their trials and they're way worse than mine and they don't even acknowledge them as trials. Because we're so caught up in the Prince of Peace who's never moved. And we're so stable, every footstep's sure, secure in his voice. And while the world's going to shambles, threads are busting at the seams, the world's falling apart, we're just, just striding. That's what the Lord um, did. And his end time bride will be overcomers. Ephesians 6, you don't need to turn there, but you know, the full Um, armor of God. Ephesians 6, we love the helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, shield of faith, breastplate of righteousness. But a vital part is that our our feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Meaning just all I walk in, I don't know anything else. I do peace. I do quietness. I do still. Anything that comes in my world 
that's not that, it needs to move or I'm moving. It's funny, my dad will tell you back in our construction days, I wasn't always perfect at it. And, and then me, myself, oh my gosh. I mean, family, we're all trying to grow, so never there. Nobody's arrived. But I remember he would tell you, we'd be in situations, he'd be like, all of a sudden, I just noticed, he, 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 at first, he was like, you just walk off. Like in the middle of conversations, if people are going like un- inappropriate or what was we touched on last night, the power of life and the death in the tongue, things that are criticized, and we're around worldly people, I'll witness, but as long as the dominant narrative is going that way or that which is not peace, I'll make it awkward, man. Just cut you off mid-sentence, just, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I don't want to listen to you, you know what I'm saying? Or sometimes you, you can um, do your best to steer the conversation. We do that a lot. Um, I remember I had, I had shared this one, it's just, but we do it all the time. You try to, if you, if you have enough leverage in the, in the atmosphere of the conversation or whatever it is, you try and get the steering wheel and go back life, go back peace, you know? And um, we were in a shop and these, the ladies, the owner and whatever, her worker were talking about the times. Can you believe this, that, and the other? And then I, I found a window, I, I heard an accent. I said, where are you from? Columbia, no way, love Columbia. The empanadas there are amazing. Before you knew it, we had like life in the room, peace. Like st- came back in, my kids will tell you, we'll just try and find a wheel and, and pull it. If you can't, just leave. Let them do turmoil. We don't do that. We, we don't do that. And you'll see in a second, nor does God. If you want to adhere your thoughts and your life and your, this to that which is not secure, silent, peaceful, the God of peace will be like, I'm over here. It didn't cost you your salvation. I'll see you in heaven one day. But relationally, I'm not with you. And um, so that's really good. Shot our feet with the uh, gospel of peace. Another analogy I was thinking of, those that um, know the Prince of Peace, they will be like those massive, heavy, mountainous boulders you see throughout Georgia that are immovable. Have you guys seen those? They're just off the size of like a bus somewhere, a big, huge, like boulder. They're amazing to me because we didn't have them in Louisiana. Me and my dad are like, where do those come from and how do they get there? Just like they pop up out of the earth or I don't know, however God just made them and put them there. But I have here, um, when the storms start raging and the trees begin to bow, even being split in two by lightning at times, leaves blowing every which away, power lines down, havoc from hail, whatever, I'm trying to give a picture of storms shaking. Those boulders are just sitting there like it was any other day, almost with like a bored stare. That's how I love to picture them just sitting there, just bored, like the world's going crazy. They're just sitting there. Immovable, not impressed at all, not moved. That's why Matthew 7 says we build, you know, our house upon that rock. But those bolts, it doesn't matter what's going on, they're immovable, stable. The trees can crack and blow and pile up on them. As soon as you move them, they're just still sitting there. Earthquakes, they may just shake a little bit. Like, that was good. (laughs) That was a good stretch. But that we'd be that way because that's how the Lord is. Okay, so now turn with me, please, to uh, Mark 4. I'll just talk to you and, and pray at the end that, that God would touch us and the Prince of Peace would be a greater reality in our homes, and our life, at work. Because how many of you know that the storms are unavoidable, you know, especially with where the world is going, the you know, surroundings, that, you know, the shakings are going to happen. But what we do and how we yield to him is super important. So watch um, chapter 4 of Mark, verse 35. We all know this, the storm on the boat. Um, I'm in the New King James Version. On the same day when evening had come, he, Jesus, said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. Uh, first off, I love that, man, because anything the Lord, I start kind of really honing in and wanting to just know it and see it. So the, the stern of a boat is at the back. You know, many of us maybe think he's down in the hole somewhere. He's just in the back, kind of by the transom, where currently a motor would go on these modern-day boats. He's in the back. 
Sometimes it's storage back there, or a place you can sit. And I love that he, ha- I love that he had a pillow. That's that human side to him. He loved comfort. I love the little things about the Lord, how he, he folded his shroud before he left the tune, like just watching things with him. And um, I, was try- I, I was trying to think like, I couldn't really find it, but like what were the pillows of his day like? You know, you could see a progression in scripture all the way back in Genesis 32, Jacob's pillow was a rock. That's tough, that's caveman stuff right there. <laughs> and uh, I mean, man, I don't know how he's seen ladders from heaven. And, like how do you even have an encounter with your head like <laughs> on a rock? <laughs> but anyway. Uh, but First Samuel, like you can tell the pillows progress. I'm hoping they were glorious in Jesus' day. But First Samuel, they were like full of goat's hair, the Bible says. Kind of, I don't know about that. A little smelly. Um, but Jesus' day, hopefully they had wool. You don't know, but he, he had a pillow. And I think that's awesome that uh, he's, he's tucked back in there asleep. And, um, you know, is, how many of you do feather pillows? I can't do this. They are awesome. I don't know what it is with me. My head just sinks into them. I love the firmer ones, but, you know, give me what you got. I've used them all over the world. So, But Jesus in the back of the boat, so meaning he's hearing it. He could. He's just out. Can you imagine? I'll start thinking of like the, lo- the dreams the Lord would have. Like the early days of like playing pitch and catch with the four living creatures before he came to the earth or something. I mean, his, his the creating the universe, his dreams are probably crazy. I'm teasing, of course, but. You know, he's out though, he's out. I mean, storm, wind, there's two things here I wanna highlight, wind, then the sea. He actually addresses them both. Boat's filling full of water, he's out. He's just sleeping, not bothered by any of it. Um, I love that this account is only in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John doesn't mention it again. I kinda feel like John, because the, the rule of thumb on this whole passage that we'll see is like, staying where the Lord's at in that realm of peace where he's, he's not bothered. But I feel like John was that. He's so near the Lord and he knew. L- let me say this first. So this is a kind of a rabbit trail, but I think important. Jesus said, they're on this side of the bank over here. They're crossing the Sea of Galilee to get over here. He said, let us, plural, cross over and go to the other side. Not try to go, go. Us, he, I'm with you. Jesus, us, other side. That's where we're going. And has he ever done this to you as I explained? He's done it to me almost every time. Then you start going because you're, you're obeying and you're in the middle of the lake in transition and all the storms start coming. You start doubting. Did he say, what are we doing? We just left the wilderness. I thought we were going to milk and honey. I'm out here. What's going on? He just does this. And I would encourage you. I don't know why. <laughs> I wish I, I, I had it figured out. But... He'll put you out into situations on purpose where you have no way back. It would have been one thing to go by land and then storms come. They could have run or gotten, gotten their way back by foot. But they're now in a vessel. If they get out of the boat, they drown. They can't go anywhere. They're stuck. And he'll do that. And I just want to encourage you often in life, at least I do this and it helps, to always remember what he told you. Because if you go back to wait, no, he said let us. means he's with me. Not a try to go, but go to the other side. I mean, that's where we're going. We are going to get there. You, in those storms, it's really, how I many you know it's hard to hear sometimes? But you got to go back to what he told you on the bank and then just trust in the middle because the storms come, they try you. What they really do is cause you to cling deeper to him because you need that deeper realm of intimacy to walk in the new authority you're going to. He's just a master at it all. But I want to encourage you, if you're in that, we're going for peace this morning, but also that was just something else that stuck out to me, how... The storms are going to come. He leads you into them. You're like, God, you created everything. You could have led us around this thing. But he leads you into them on purpose. Remember the one with Peter walking on the water? We did that one Sunday. He led him into that storm. Sometimes he'll let the storm, this is another key, sometimes he'll let the storm stay and just teach you how to walk through it to him in the storm. Sometimes he'll trust your faith in him. He'll test your faith in him and then ultimately rebuke it and stop it. But nevertheless, I don't know why. When there's chapter changes and transitions and stepping into a greater place, storms come in the middle. And when you're in it, just say, well, hold on. What did he tell me? 
And hopefully he told you, if you're like, I think he told me, and you don't know, you may be in a Ishmael storm you created. <laughs> and just find some floaties quick and get a paddle. <laughs> I'm teasing. But, but that's why you just want to make sure you, you, know, you heard before you, you get in. So, so that's super important. But he's, you know, he's uh, in the stern, asleep on a pillow. They awoke him. I can imagine. So he's asleep, right? Winds going crazy, which then caused the sea to go crazy. Now, now water's getting in the boat. Have you guys ever been in that situation before? Yeah, that's sketchy. Oh, you mean figuratively or literally? Oh, that's Austin Rachel goes, yes. Oh, both. Wow. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story. I was in a, um, because I love fishing, things like that. There's a couple that came to mind. This one's fun. It's not really connected, but it's fun. So one morning I'm waiting on the Lord. I just love fishing. When the Lord lets me, it's amazing. Me, Chris, Tommy, we all, Tom, Jason, do you love fishing? Not really, you'll get there. William, William does. So um, it just has Jesus on it, I figure. Uh, one morning, I'm not kidding, this happened. I'm waiting on the Lord back at the, the house that lived by the lake. And I, I, I'm right at the end of my time with the Lord, and I go into a vision. I'm not kidding. I saw it clear as day of me casting right into this specific spot on an island catching a massive bass. And I was in deep presence. Meaning it wasn't my soul. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I was like, yeah, sure, you heard the Lord. You just want to go fish, you know. But I saw it was like one of those deep spiritual ones. So I go, Lord, are you kidding me? This showed me his love and his care sometimes for the things you care about. And um, I go, man, I mean, I'm not even done prayer. I was going to but do you want me? Okay, because it was so real. I know, I know his voice. So I get in the uh, boat I had at the time. I go straight to that island. I'm, there's three of them. I go right to the third one, right in the nook where the, like a lily pad type growth. Cast right into it once, twice. I, I you know, uh, honestly, I started doubting like, man, third time ish, somewhere in there. Whoa, massive bass. He nails it. Biggest, second to largest bass I ever caught out of there. The, the biggest one I caught was on Judah's birthday. We call him the birthday bass for Judah. I took him fishing for his birthday. And listen to what happened on this one. I'm not kidding. Can't make this stuff up. Never had a fish do this ever before. This bat on Judah's birthday, we called him the birthday pass. Remember, babe? Monster. Biggest one I ever caught out of there. Second biggest one was the one I saw in the vision. Which later, it's funny, I'm in a green room with Michael Kulianos because he loves the story. We both fish. He tells Bill, I'm not kidding, Bill's in the green room. He's like, listen to this. Brian saw a vision where to catch the fish and just nails it. And Bill goes, why well, he loved it. He goes, that's not really fishing though, is it? <laughs> Meaning I didn't have to fish for it. You know, it was awesome. Like typical Bill, like wisdom. He goes, well, that's not fishing, is it? Or something like that. So funny. But, but Judah's, uh, Judah's birthday bath, I'm not kidding. We took pictures. No way. God's so good. Just special for his birthday. We let him go. He goes out probably from me to you follow a well, good ways from the, the boat. Jumps out of the water and like waves at us. Like, kah, 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 kah. We're like, no way. You're saying bye. <laughs> it was awesome. Again, may not have been the Lord, but it's fun to think about. So anyway, but I love this. So say, say the Lord's sleep. I can just figure it because it got bad enough where water's getting in the boat. Oh, that was another one. Yeah, I remember I was down in the brackish water, Lake Pontchartrain. Anybody from Louisiana on a fishing rig and boy, it, engine went out, water's coming in. I was just me out in the middle of nowhere. Sketchy. Because you're in brackish water. There's alligators, but also you're in salt. It's a mix. And not a good feeling. So the water's getting in the boat. I can just imagine. I'm like, oh, wow. Like they're wanting the Lord to wake up, you know. Do you see the waves? <laughs> oh, wow, Peter. <laughs> water's now in the boat. You know what I'm saying? They're, you can totally imagine like hoping he'll wake up and the Lord's out. Totally out. He doesn't care. So it finally says they, they had to wake him up. They're like, Lord, do you not care? And we all know um, the rest of the account. He arose, rebuked the wind and said to the sea. So there's two things went on here, and I want to hit it figuratively for us. Rebuke the wind, stop, whatever he said. It doesn't say what he said to the wind, but then said to the sea. And this is what I want to encourage us. The sea of our soul is how I see it. He said to it, peace, be still. Silence, actually, that word is silence. He spoke it over the sea. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm over the waters, he rebuked them for their faith. They were like, whoa, who is this that rebukes the sea? So I um, want to talk on that for a second, just how 
often with, in where, with where days are heading. The winds speak of the atmosphere. Could be spiritual. Could be naturally what's going on in our workplace, our family, whatever it is. That when they start blowing, by default, the seas of our soul want to start moving and going crazy and thinking they're going to take your boat down. And the Lord, he can rebuke the winds which we see in this passage, he does. The other ones, he doesn't. He actually trains Peter to walk in it. And my whole thing is, I'm proposing is that we would learn the Prince of Peace who sleeps through these things. Oh yeah, but what I want to point out is I think it's amazing. John doesn't even write this account in his gospel. I feel like he was so near the Lord, he knew like, no, just watch. I feel like he was so just caught up in the Lord. Like, look at him, he sleeps on his side. Water is like, above his ankles he's just wiggling his toes in the water look at the Lord you know like this boat's going down John's so caught up this is how I see it I look at him he's in perfect peace and he's probably trying to mimic him like on the other side of the boat like just trying to lay just like him he doesn't even write it I feel like he was like this wasn't even worth like these other guys because if you if you're so close to him you still know his voice doesn't matter what's happening in the storm if he said it it's gonna happen unless you get outside of obedience you know, an in, in intimacy. But that, that wind that comes is going to come. Sometimes it comes within our own life, up, up close and personal. Sometimes it's just where society's going. Sometimes it's just sheer darkness, opposition. The enemy overplaying his cards and noise. Well, there's a place in the Lord where the seas of our soul can be completely still always. You know, like when a pond, the water's like glass. It's so still. Like that's where we want to, there's a place really in the Bible we can live like this always. And I'm going, I want to go there. Like that water, you can skip rocks on for days. You can see the reflection in it, which I think is a beautiful prophetic picture of you can, you can see clearly what heaven's saying. You can hear clearly, you make less mistakes versus when it gets turbulent, it gets tough. And um, so also turn with me to... Um, Philippians 4, and this is, I think, is a big key, like practically for us, and we'll land it. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. We all know this passage, many of us. <clears throat> you guys see me in the balcony? Do you want me to go back on the stage? Or are you good? Okay, we're good. Thumbs up. Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Watch this. Paul's writing the church of Philippi. Finally, brethren... Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, uh, meditate upon these things, meaning fix your mind, your thought life on these things. And these alone, and then watch this verse 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and watch this, and the God of peace will be with you. I love the King James Version. Basically, he says that full list, and he goes, those things that you've seen and learned and heard in me, you, you see me do this. I live this way. Do them, and the God of peace will be with you. Meaning, if you don't do them, guess where the God of peace will be? Not with you. And far too often we live our Christian life, we're going to enter heaven and be saved, but 80% of it we're walking and the God of peace is not with us because of us. And I love this because this puts reliance upon us, meaning we have to do these things. And if we don't, the God of peace won't be with us. So I want to go back through that a little bit slower. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, that word there in Greek means worthy of respect. You know, I was thinking like you ever pull out in front of somebody accidentally and they tell you you're number one in traffic, you know, like, hey, you're number one. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that's not worthy of respect. It's not noble. So to your own demise, if you let that set in and just meditate and focus and how dare they. And, and you know, I just pray that we would find a habit in life of anything that's not in this checklist, we ditch it. It doesn't even stick for a second. But that which is noble, worthy of respect, basically the Lord. You'll see in a second, it's basically the Lord. True, just, pure, lovely. That's the only thing we meditate upon, focus upon. 
talk about. Well, you're in denial, brother. No, I'm just doing the word. I love the God of peace with me. You don't have to go into now. It doesn't mean you don't know what's going on in the world. I just don't. If it's not in this checklist, it, I don't give it the second thought. I ditch it. I train my kids this way. We just don't, we don't go there. And you'll start to realize like, man, this is a way better way, uh, pace of life. The God of peace is always with me. So what the Lord did, you know, anything that tries to creep in the house through even your children or spouse or the workplace that's not in this checklist, you ditch it. You have nothing to do with it because if you do, if you start to meditate, which means give attention to the God of peace will start just departing and then the soul starts getting disturbed. For you know, you're half a day into it, half an hour, and things are turbulent. That's why, too, I um, always, you know, you'll hear me say, like, the news is so detrimental. And I know I'm preaching to the choir with our group, but things like this, like, why, why do that? The Bible actually encourages you not to do that. Some people I know for their job, there's, there's certain points of it, but if we're honest, like, you watching the news is not going to change how you do anything. It has, you're just getting pulled into, and that's just one of many. The gossips, the conversations, whatever it may be. But I say the news because the people are fixated upon these things. They don't realize, they're meditating. How much of the news is noble, worthy of respect? This is what you got to do. You got to start putting stuff through a checklist. How much of the news is just? And that word just means upright by God. How much of it is pure? Man, that's it. Listen, right now in this hour, I saw yesterday in prayer, right at the end, I, it was almost like a magnet of the enemy coming through the earth. And anybody that still has dross in this hour, they're, they're going to get stuck. They're going to get picked off. It's that last hour sifting the enemy. I'm not to scare anybody, but I'm, and, I, and I don't know how I knew, but I knew if, if we're refined as of pure gold, we won't stick. So I go, really? I looked it up. Sure enough, apparently real gold's not magnetic, but fool's gold. It has enough dross and fake metals in it. It'll stick to magnets. We've got to be purified in this hour. And, and you just meditate on that, which is pure. That's not pure, not for me. But, but it, you know, a person wants to talk about it. I don't care. Do you, want the, you don't want the God of peace? Then you go over there and talk about that. I got many exit doors on my house. <laughs> pick one. <laughs> Plenty of doors. I'm just teasing, but just meaning pick one, you know. <laughs> you like that part. Of, in love, you know what I mean? But it's like, man, the God of peace is much more important because this is where Jesus dwells. This is where the Holy Spirit dwells. How much of the news is lovely? Uh, how much of the news is of good report? And I'm sure there's some good in there, but I'm not trying to get the 20 out of the, the 20% out of the other 80 filth. I'm good. I'm good. And I'm just using that one. There's so many in earth, in the earth and in the world and, and um, that we can guard, guard our life from. If there is anything of virtue, virtuous, meaning has might and strength. Just last week, remember, um, William had the, the Lord spoke to him about the healing, and then I, he didn't know it, but I had a dream of somebody's glasses um, being, uh, it was in a dream, but, you know, to where they could be free of, of eyeglasses. Best way I could interpret it. Well, we just got the email in. I don't know if they're in here online or what, but they heard the, that morning and they were able to, by faith, and they did away with their glasses. Eyesight, eyesight's totally back, normal. They're not wearing glasses, whatever. Yeah. Um, William had a powerful testimony up here. I didn't, we didn't get the green light to share all the details, but it's just insane. I think healing too, and then, yeah, the whole connection back to like, whoa, from his, what he heard and everybody. But virtuous, full of strength and power. That's what we talk about. That's what we meditate on, the power of God, his victory, what he does. No highlight reels for the enemy or anything other than. It's, it's got to be in this checklist. Um, praise worthy. Worthy of praise. And you may have to go back 10 years ago. In the, in the situation you're in now, you may be like, man, there is nothing just. But there is. There really is because it's in him. Just, if you just focus on the Lord, he's just, noble, lovely, pure, praiseworthy, virtuous. And the Bible says meditate upon these things. For in doing that, the God of peace will be with you. And a lot of us think sovereignly like, well, but God's, he never leaves me nor forsakes me. The Bible is so clear. If you don't meditate on these things, he's not going to be with you. He's with you. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. But I liken it to he's with you contractually, but not relationally. You can be in a, a marriage and you're married, you have rings on, but you're totally separate. You're not on the same page. Jesus is in the boat. He's in the boat, but they're not with Jesus. 
You understand what happens here? He, he's the prince of peace is in the stern on a pillow. And they're just in havoc thinking they're all going to die. So meaning we meditate upon these things. Another one, um, and I'll start to land at Isaiah 26, 3. It's the same thing just from Isaiah's um, slant. Watch this. Isaiah 26, 3. You, meaning God, will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. There's the promise again. The biblical way is there is a place that God can keep you forever, 24-7, all the days of your life, in perfect peace. You can imagine it as like a fence around me. He leads my, me by still waters, restores my soul. Um, and that's the still waters of the soul. But God can keep you in perfect peace. But guess what? Here's the reliance upon you and I, whose mind is stayed upon him. So powerful and important. And what is him? Noble, true, pure, lovely. So it's just starting to, like we ride a bike, we've got to train ourselves. It really is. It sounds too much like a formula, but the Bible is often this way. Um, I love, watch this one, Romans 8, 6. You don't need to turn there. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It's, it's, spirit, it's being spiritually minded, meditating upon that which is good, noble, true. And so just want to encourage you guys um, throughout life, the more he would help us. Obviously, it's a lot easier if you spend time with the Prince of Peace. If you try and meditate on that which is good, noble, true, lovely, pure, praiseworthy, virtuous, and you're not hanging with him who is these things, the power won't be there to do it. But also I've learned if we're not careful out of just the habits of life, culture, whatever it may, may be. Some of us were raised up in homes where everybody's talking over each other. It's just chaos. It's loud. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but oh, well, my bad. I didn't want to put him on the spot. But it's just, it's, it's like always turmoil. And you're so used to it that you don't realize it's a habit in life that's not biblical. And we're so quick to just spout out, which the Bible says, out, we touched on this last week, out of the abundance of the heart, meaning the overflow, the mouth speaks. So what happens is meditation fills the heart, and when the heart is full, it comes out here. So you can take it to the bank. If it's coming out of here, somebody's already been well deep into meditating upon it, that then fill the container of the heart, and then the abundance of the overflow of the heart, the mouth spoke. Which again is okay, we've all been there, but we want to stop it way back at the meditation point. And, and so what I've learned is a lot of people like, man, they fall in love with the Lord, love his presence, his word, go deep in the presence, hours in God, but come out and don't obey the word that says meditate anything virtuous, praiseworthy, you know, noble, true, lovely, pure. If it's not pure, not a chance does not come through here. You shut it down. You rebuke the winds, say silence to the sea of it. And the God of peace is right there with you. And then what happens is, because I'll tell you, the more responsibility comes in the call, the storms get bigger, the weight and cost of them increase. And if you don't learn this early on, later on it can cost you greatly. Just knowing that that Prince of Peace has got to be so near and we do just like him in meditating upon these things. And it's just beautiful because where, with where the days are heading, the highlight reels, people out in society. We saw a really early window of it in 2020, training wheels for, with where the days are heading. And you could tell, like, man, the earth was in shambles. You could feel it. But those that are those heavy mountainous boulders that are meditating upon him, are you in denial? No. I, I, I know, we know what's going on. We're not in denial. It's just we're yielding to the word and immovable, undisturbed. And that's how we stay clear and intimately walking with him, obeying his voice, things like this. It was so good. If you guys want to stand. Yeah, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. Yeah, and I would encourage you, just like I mentioned earlier, like even if we need to write that list out from Philippians 4 and be like, hold on a second, is this lovely, pure, virtuous? And if it doesn't meet the checklist, 
you know, and the more and more we do this in life, it becomes habitual and it's, you'll notice like, oh my gosh, this is very spiritually minded. The Bible says it's spiritual. And the God of peace is nearer than ever before. I didn't know the waters of my soul could be still always. Like, it doesn't matter what the storms are doing. And, um, and it's so, so good. So we'll pray. Oh, if the prayer team could come, please. Be good. Love to pray for you. Say, you may say, I need, um, kind of preaching to me, I need peace this morning. There's been turmoil or winds and things like this. We'd love to pray for you. If you need healing in your body, words of encouragement, whatever it may be. Jesus, thank you so much that you are the Prince of Peace. I pray you'd make us more like you this morning. Like Philippians 4, you'd give us grace to meditate upon that which is good, uh, noble, true, just, praiseworthy. That's the only thing we'd meditate upon. So it'd be the only thing that fills our heart and then out of the overflow of our heart, it's the only thing we talk about. There's nothing else worth giving attention to because we want the God of peace always with us, the God of peace in our homes, the God of peace at work, at least in my cubicle. If it ain't in y'all's cubicles, that's fine, but my cubicle's peace, the God of peace. Oh, Prince of Peace, why don't you just lift your hands to heaven right now and at home and receive... Prince of Peace, I pray, Lord Jesus, come into our homes in a new way. And I speak to the seas of your soul right now, just as the Lord did. I say, silence. Peace be still. I thank you for tangible peace this morning to come upon each and every one. The supernatural stillness of the soul, clarity return. Grace and peace be with you. Transform us, I pray. I pray. Be glorified in our lives, Lord Jesus. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. I want to welcome you to come if you want prayer for it. Whatever it may be. It could be anything. I'd love to minister to you. Encourage you. Release healing in his spirit.
Because I trust you Because I trust you 
declare it. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. Come on, tell them, tell them, tell them. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I trust you with my life. Trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, I trust you.
quick. We have this precious woman of God, uh, Pearl, uh, from Uganda, all the way in from Uganda. He came into the service. She's going to stop right back by Moravia Falls and back to Uganda. But I, I want to invite her to come and some of our students, we want to pray for her. She just wants more of God. More students come around and we want to lay hands on Pearl. Come see, beautiful woman of God. Just lay hands, anything prophetic. Take the glory back to Uganda. Wow, that's a long trip right there. The hungry shall be filled. Just release anything you got, Shireen. Thank you for Pearl. The blessing of God upon you. The fire of God go back with you. Manifest glory. God, I thank you for rivers of heaven to flow now. Rivers of heaven to flow through your life. Revelation like never before. Dreams and visions. Intimacy. The deep, intimate place of the Lord. The bridal realm open up. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. I just see you um, standing on the grounds, but as you walk on the ground, I see a trembling. There's a shaking of the ground that you're going to be walking in a new authority when you go back home. And I feel like the shaking represents those hard places that you haven't been able to enter into. And the Lord's saying that those walls are coming down in the name of Jesus, him in you and through you. Those walls shall come down in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I see you with a crown. The Lord put in a crown in your head. You are royalty. You are royalty. I speak that unto you deep in your soul. Hey, the daughter of the Lord Almighty, the one that wears the crown because of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Pearl. Hey, thank you that she is a pearl, <laughs> that she's hidden. Hey, she's hidden and yet so pure and bright and pure and bright. I thank you for her hunger, 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 and she will hunger even more. And those who hunger, they are filled. So thank you, Lord, that you're feeling. Hey, you're feeling her. You're feeling her with your spirit, God. And she'll go back completely transformed to your glory, Lord, in Jesus. Jesus. Hey, mighty name. Amen. Just bless her, Lord. Bless her in fullness and in power. Bring, let her bring peace. Let her bring fullness. Everywhere she walks, let her just show your presence. Let her be a magnifying glass for you, Lord. Let her be, be a megaphone. Let her say your word and in truth and in power and in fullness. She, her, her name is Pearl. She's a gem. She's prized by you. Let her show others how much that you prize them too, Lord. Thank you. Let her be purveyor of peace. Let her carry peace and show peace to everyone around her. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I saw just a garment of peace drop from heaven on you. So I just thank you, Lord, for the garment of peace. Because her eyes are steadfast on you, God, she will live in perfect peace. And then I saw you walking and picking up what the generations before you did not. So I just thank you, Lord, for what she's picking up, God, and what she's gonna carry. And I see you will be on fire for the Lord and you will carry the flame of the Lord wherever you go. I thank you, Lord, for this consuming fire that's in her, God, the purity that's in you. And I thank you, Lord, for her life, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the humility. Thank you for the surrender. Thank you for the life laid down. Thank you for softening hearts. God, thank you for the testimony that this is for anybody who sees and hears, not just for her, but 
for all of the lives being touched. Thank you for the work that you're doing, Jesus. That you are alive today doing mighty, mighty things. That your power is just as real now as it ever has been. God, we pray that the spirit of revelation open up. Fresh dreams, visions, life be spoken and poured out in Jesus' name. The spirit of God come. Power of God come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this woman of God. And I just pray, Lord, that you would fill her with your peace, that she would be filled with your presence and take this back to Uganda and be a light for you, Jesus, to shine brightly, to be full of you, Holy Spirit, to be a gateway, a, a river of peace, for you, Lord. Plead the blood of Jesus over her as she travels. We thank you for her faith and for her hunger, and I pray it increases even more, and that you would be glorified, Jesus, in her life, and be covered in the peace of Jesus. I saw a picture of you with, uh, I actually saw a, um, saw a picture of a fire hose that was, um, it was, it was knotted up. It had one loop in it. And then I saw the Lord release it. And then, um, the first part of it, I believe just to encourage you that I felt like he said that there's going to be something that he's going to do that just like in a, a garden hose, when it's kinked up, it can't, the water can't flow from it. And that there's, he's, I just saw his hand unkinking it so that there's, you know, the, just like a fire engine and the, the, those hoses are a lot fatter and thicker and they can hold a lot more water that there's just going to be a, a, a refreshing. And I saw you, I saw the hose turning upside down and almost like in a, um, the way a sprinkler functions over you. And the Lord just was going to, he just wants to encourage you. He's going to rain blessing over you that, that there is going to, his hand will surely be on you. So Lord, we bless her and her time in Jesus name. Um, I saw, well, two things. Uh, the Lord's going to exceed your expectation, uh, what you've asked for. I saw him giving you a special grace to pray. And then I saw you standing on the dry grounds in Uganda, but your mouth, when they opened, um, the shift was tremendous. So as the spirit of the Lord, he looked translucent coming out of your mouth when everything reverberated and shifted and moved. So I just see a great authority coming in that um, through the prayer. And he's going to exceed your expectations for the things that you've asked for. And um, Uganda is going to be like your ground. That's your, that's your territory. Uh, and you have tremendous authority there. And that's what I saw. I immediately got the month of April. I don't know if it's a play on words, like there's a name, a family name, but the Lord started speaking to me about joy in April um, that um, you can expect. It's like a month of visitation. I know it seems far away, but it, uh, it's going to come really quickly. And I feel like um, the Lord said he's blessing the works of your hands also. We just reverse anything that came from anywhere else. We only accept the blessing. The blessing of the Lord is on your hands. In the name of Jesus, everything you touch will prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you also for heavy duty glory visitation. I see you laughing uncontrollably. Um, watch in mid-April mid-April like something springing forth in your life in April I thank you Lord Jesus amen Lord thank you thank you Jesus 
Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your perfect love, Jesus. We trust you, Jesus. We thank you. Father, we just thank you for the word today. Lord God, the perfect peace, Father. May us walk in peace. The Bible says just seek him and we will find him. Lord, let us seek you and you will give us, you will give us you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Pearl as she goes back to Uganda to her mission field, Father. We just thank you that you speak through her, Father. We just thank you for your peace through her, Lord God. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord, speaking the love of Jesus. Father, thank you, Jesus. Church, we also want to pray for the team that's going to El Salvador, Father, Pastor Brian, and the students that will be going to El Salvador. Father, I just pray they walk in perfect peace, Father, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking the love of Jesus. Father, I pray that the people of El Salvador will be so blessed, Father. We just thank you for them hosting the team, Father. We just thank you for the people of El Salvador. Lord, we just thank you for the group that is going there to their mission field there, Father. We thank you for them f- filled with the Holy Spirit, perfect peace, spreading the love of Jesus. Lord, I also pray for our church community here as we also go to our mission fields every day, Lord God, walking in perfect peace, in your peace, filled with the Holy Spirit and just spreading the love of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. Amen, church.